So we now turn to Executive Report Number 1. Before we come to paragraphs for adoption, the Council need to consider an amendment to be moved on reception of the report that relates to paragraph 20, New Direction of Home Ownership Policies. I now call upon Councillor Govindia to move reception of the report and Councillors Thomas and Carpenter to move their amendment. Councillor Govindia. Mr Mayor, move report number one, the report of the Executive. Councillor Thomas. Madam Mayor, uh, can I start by uh, formally uh, moving the amendment? Um, my purpose tonight uh, is not to dispute the goal of assisting people into home ownership, uh, which I support. It's to challenge the way in which the, this council has interpreted it in opposition to social housing, a process it's proposing to take a step further under the, the new flexibilities brought in by the current government. I was shocked when I first read last year's housing market assessment, which set out the aim, and I quote here, to reduce the proportion of social housing in Wandsworth to a level which is on par with that of, of the surrounding outer boroughs. This is something which this council has been notably successful in pursuing. Between 1978 and 2002, the council sold off nearly 23,000 council homes, raising some 650 million. Had these homes been replaced, uh, we would now have an additional 700 council lets per year, a number almost exactly equal to the annual shortfall of social housing we face. Instead, over the past four years, fewer than 250 new social rented homes have been provided in the borough, nearly 800 fewer than the target set by the council's own development plan. Against this backdrop, it's hardly surprising that social housing has become highly rationed and that the proportion of economically active tenants has declined. What is surprising is the belief that the way to solve this problem is to reduce the stock of council housing even further and to develop a substitute that will penalize rather than reward work. Setting rents for so-called affordable rented housing at 50% higher than council rents, the highest remember in the country already, is going to massively extend the benefits trap. While the prospect of losing your tenancy if you do well will create a further disincentive and risks forcing out precisely those people that mixed communities need. It's claimed that social housing is a luxury we can't afford because it provides social tenants with housing subsidy for life. Yet when it comes to promoting home ownership, the members opposite want to do exactly the same thing by offering a £50,000 discount under the right to buy. At best, this has got to look inconsistent. At worst, I'd suggest hypocritical. We're also told, including by the leader of the council, that he wants to make social housing more aspirational. Uh, of course, we all want to see our estates improve, although personally I can't go along with the portrayal of them as terrible places where no one wants to live. But how exactly is he proposing to achieve this? Does he, for example, intend to focus on helping into work the 7% of council tenants who are unemployed, something which the Labour Group would of course support? Or does he mean that he wants to shift the allocation of council housing towards the better off? If the latter, where precisely does he plan to house those on lower incomes, given the expected contraction and the availability of private lets for those on housing benefit? A recent council consultation response might, pro might provide the clue. Uh, it talks about offering private tenancies outside the borough to homeless households uh, and the need to set realistic expectations for them, 